Hi, continuing on our uh, Wi-Fi and location journey. This is part two. I might have a part three. So in part one, I looked at the landscape where, you know, I also mentioned about UWB and BLE. And I also talked about how there is a trend moving from, say, initial RSSI based techniques to something where time, phase, angle, etc., being used. Okay. And there have been recent developments, especially on the UWB side from a marketplace perspective, I think, which kind of uh, pushes this whole location business to another level from where it has been. So, my name is uh, Srikanth, and I'm with NanoCell Networks. So the big step forward from a Wi-Fi perspective, the initial RSSI based techniques in Wi-Fi were uh, having no explicit standard support. There were some additions to this standard called 11V, where there was uh, some time of departure included from the client side, allowing APs to estimate distances with clients. I don't think it really took off because synchronization, etc., became a problem. So to avoid synchronization and to use non-RSSI methods, this FTM was brought in and published as a part of the 11 2016 standards, full standards. There was a revision called MC and then it folded into the full standard. The idea is very simple. Uh, two entities, in this case, the AP and the phone, Obviously, they discover this capability. They have some negotiations regarding certain flexibility allowed. But the simple idea is that uh, both of them send frames and measure the times at which they receive the respective frames and what times they send those frames. Okay. So they just use the fact that the without synchronization, the ability to compare certain times will allow them to estimate the you know what we call distance by using time and then the velocity of the light okay or more accurately time of flight into the velocity of light called c so it's a simple idea in fact both sides can do it in this example you see that certain measurements are shared by the access point when it is received and when it is originally sent, etc. So using this, the phone can calculate the distance. And how it uses this information to do various things is kind of left to application layers. Now, if you closely look at it, as I said, there is enough flexibility here. They can do this uh, process multiple times so that they can average over it. This need not be associated, okay? So there is quite a bit of flexibility, but despite all this, and despite the fact that Google has probably taken a big step forward, I would still say it has not really, you know, become a big thing, okay? So because UWB has had recent success, it has reignited this whole game from a variety of perspective, enterprise industry use cases, to possibly proximity based applications for uh, you know recent announcements with apple on its air tag if i'm not wrong has again kick started this whole market okay so what does wi-fi do with respect to this so wi-fi is working on 802.11 az called the next generation positioning initiative okay this one is not yet fully published uh, it might be published uh, in 2022, going by the uh, timelines given in the standardization web page. So first, uh, what are the enhancements at a broad level? Um, it's not restricted to infra networks. It's also open for P2P networks, which makes you know interesting application cases in uh, many environments. Uh, I would say the most important thing mimicking 
some of the advances in the UW area is a secure exchange for estimating timing and other measurements. I've just put timing here, but security is very important. In the FTM procedure that we spoke about, that was not taken into account. In fact, 11AZ has MAC and PHI. So even at PHI, you can have cryptography employed uh, for your long training fields, which are used for channel estimation, which ultimately can give you the multi-path profile and help you lock on to the first path. Okay, so I would say this is a major step. This was also a major step uh, in the UWB area where uh, the 15.4 had to evolve to what is called as 15.4Z. And the similar idea is happening with the BLE 5.2 where they are bringing all the secure exchanges as well. Okay, so I would say this is extremely important because uh, security, privacy, etc. And remember, this also applies to even unassociated clients. So there is a lot of protocol work involved in this whole business. There is some detailed cryptography for the file layer. The next important addition is that when FTM was published, it was still 11AC days, but now we are in 11AX days with OFDMA. That can bring a lot of difference because when you are dealing with multiple clients and you want to get some measurements done, you can use the 11AX trigger frames to ask multiple clients to share some information or even a frame for measurement, okay? So this is a very important step. So packets like null data packet, which were used for beam forming, enabling us to do MIMO channel estimation. And I think this is Wi-Fi's strong suite that uh, because we have MIMO support in many of these devices, right? Almost two cross two MIMO default in client, many access points even larger than that, rich channel estimation information uh, inherent ability to estimate angle, etc. So I think a lot of detailed reports are also factored in into 11AZ. So in the FTM, we talked about only time of flight, but in the 11AZ, both parties can negotiate and agree to have much detailed information obtained by MIMO channel estimation, which can be done securely, which can also be enhanced with addition of more fields in NDP to get a better channel estimate, etc. etc. Okay. There are a few other features as well, but I'm not touching on all the things. Just wanted to give you an idea of where 11 AZ is, incorporating all the 11 AX flexibilities and also bringing security to this whole, uh, you can say, timing, angle, channel estimation process. Where does this lead us to? Is, is all done? Uh, unfortunately, I think there's still some more work. Interoperability of 11AZ at link layer, I think is should not be a problem in the sense that Wi-Fi Alliance will come up with a certification program to revamp their location services. I think the real key is how does Wi-Fi make it friendly for applications to enhance this information, okay? And will it work across all platforms? is a question because the doubts are raised because even today peer-to-peer -to -peer in Wi-Fi doesn't work as smoothly, right? It works fine within the Apple ecosystem or in an app framework, etc. but it's not natively something which works out of the box. And very important that Wi-Fi has big ambitions for Wi-Fi sensing, Wi-Fi aware is already a program, all these can use this detailed measurements coming out of this context and that could make for a very rich, you can say location based, a variety of services, okay? So I think that uh, gives us an idea of where Wi-Fi is going in this area. For more, please take a look at our website. We also offer a lot of courses through Wi-Fi Now Academy. Thank you.